my name is James Weiner, and uh, I'm, the only, I'm the second affirmative. Uh, and I'd like to explain why uh, legalizing PEDs in uh, collegiate and uh, professional sports should be uh, should happen. Uh, just a quick uh, couple statistics uh, over here from uh, Julian Sevalescu. Uh, of the 21 podium finishers in Tour de France for the period of 1995 to 2005, or I'm sorry, 1999 to 2005, uh, 20 <laughs> are suspected of proving to have used illegal substances. Uh, from 1996 to 2010 in the Tour de France, 36 out of the 45. In the 2012 London Olympics, 107 tested, uh, athletes tested positive for doping. Uh, a few of these names are actually pretty big. Tyson Gay, Safa Powell, Sharon uh, Simpson, uh, Tatiana Senko, Sandra per uh, Berkovic. So uh, that should explain that it's a pretty common thing. And these are the people that we know about. So the ones that we don't know about could be even bigger. We don't know yet, but it's time to find out. And another statistic says that uh, <coughs> competitors face a probability of only 2.9% of getting caught. So of these 2.9% are the ones that are getting caught. So that should tell you a little more. Um, as far as the WADA, they say that banned substances uh, meet two of, the, uh, two, of the, uh, two of three criteria. So one of them is a danger to health, Second one would be they lead to performance enhancement, and three they use uh, they uh, their use is contrary to the spirit of the sport. Uh, what we don't know is uh, a couple of these um, banned substances aren't as bad as some of the stuff that is legal. Uh, some stuff that's legal, creatine, uh, perhaps, which can increase your uh, maximum power and strength up to five to fifteen percent. Uh, caffeine, which is a stimulant, uh, that and nitrates and beetroot extract uh, increases time to exhaustion from 15 to 25 percent of constant. Another problem uh, today is the uh, PEDs today that are usually bought on the black market and, and they're not really administered uh, and controlled, which has no care for athlete uh, health. Uh, cortisone injections are another big thing uh, right now because they're technically legal, but they're also a steroid. So why are these uh, legal yet you know, anabolic steroids aren't? Cortisone helps you know, keep pain off of your mind during a game. And Dwayne Wayne was getting cortisone shots uh, during the NBA Finals uh, uh, in between quarters, so that says something. Uh, I'd like to go to the solvency claims now. Uh, so there's a myth going around that, you know, Steroids turn players into freaks. Professional athletes kind of already are freaks. I mean, no normal person can actually throw 98 miles an hour, and, and who's going to want to catch a slant route going across the middle of the field with a 250 pound linebacker waiting for you? So these people are already, you know, not normal. So this uh, allowing PEDs would uh, help them. PEDs allow you to train harder and would help you recover quicker and then uh, it would also help you train hard again the next day. The problem with the policies right now is that they're trying to focus more on catching uh, people that are trying to be undetectable instead of using the resources to evaluate health and fitness to compete instead of uh, so we're not really trying to help our athletes, instead we're just trying to catch the cheaters. And then with the new policy, we'll be able to uh, put more money towards uh, helping athletes instead of trying to catch people that are doing something that is technically illegal. Uh, 
the, uh, legalizing the PEDs in uh, collegiate sports would also help uh, collegiate athletes and other people uh, to understand the health problems with doping, and then we would also be able to take uh, take more steps into finding healthier uh, ways of administering PEDs. 